Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today we're continuing our investigations into AMD's new Ryzen Mobile 4000 APUs. We already comprehensively covered productivity performance and touched on integrated GPU gaming a little bit in our initial review. Now it's time to tackle the other main use case for these processes, and that's gaming with a discrete GPU. This is particularly important for these H-series parts that we looked at first. Gaming laptops stick to these 45-watt-ish processes pretty much exclusively. We know that AMD had a very compelling part on their hands in the Ryzen 9 4900HS with much better efficiency, plus better multi-thread and single-thread performance for the most part, but gaming can often be a different story. Latencies, boost performance, frequency can all play a part, so today we'll be doing our best to explore how the Ryzen 9 4900HS fares in games. The biggest challenge for this testing is getting an apples to apples platform to compare the Ryzen 9 4900HS to Intel processors. A Ryzen 4000 test laptop, the ASUS Zephyrus G14, comes with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 Max-Q processor with a 65 watt power limit, which so far has not been seen in any other laptops. So right now we're unable to put Ryzen up against Intel in a completely fair battle with the same GPU. However, the results from today's tests are still quite interesting because I am putting the Ryzen 9 4900HS up against the closest platform I could find, which is a Core i7-9750H laptop with an RTX 2060 at 80 watts. Unfortunately, I was unable to source an 8-core Intel laptop with the RTX 2060, but that should become easier with the upcoming 10th generation Intel lineup that features the 8-core Core i7-10875H, so we'll hopefully be able to revisit this battle later. But for now, we should be able to get a reasonable look at how powerful AMD's Ryzen APU is for gaming in a mobile form factor. I'm going to be looking at some 1080p results, some CPU limited scenarios, some GPU limited, see what the situation is there, and then dive into some heavily CPU limited gaming at 720p. Along the way, I've tried to do the best I can with what is available to look specifically at the impact of the CPU in games. 720p creates a CPU bottleneck with the RTX 2060 in some titles, and that allows us to isolate the impact of the CPU. We know most people will actually be gaming at 1080p though, so let's take a look at that first. I want to start here with a few very GPU limited environments so we can get a baseline look at the differences between the RTX 2060 Max-Q and the non-Max-Q models. Control at 1080p high settings is very GPU demanding and here we see the RTX 2060 perform 9% better than the RTX 2060 Max-Q on average and 7% better in 1% lows. Similar story in Metro Exodus. The non-Max-Q model ends up around 7% faster, it has a 23% higher power limit and generally clocks up to 10% higher in the situations I've seen. So that's our baseline GPU limited performance. So we're just all fully aware of the differences we're dealing with. Let's get into some less GPU limited scenarios, starting with Grand Theft Auto 5, which can become CPU limited with higher power RTX GPUs at 1080p. However, the RTX 2060 isn't quite powerful enough to deliver a consistent CPU bottleneck, so the Intel system with non max q graphics ends up 3% faster on average. That's not a bad result given the differences in GPU power, but let's move on. Watch Dogs 2 is one of the most demanding titles in our test lineup, hitting both the CPU and GPU hard. What we find here is that unlike in our GPU limited situations, the Ryzen 9 4900HS with RTX 2060 Max-Q is marginally ahead of the Intel system despite having the slower GPU. We're talking 1% faster here, which is margin of error type stuff, but this is definitely a promising result for AMD's Ryzen APU in gaming. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is where we start to see an interesting phenomenon with the Ryzen APU up against Intel's 9th gen Core i7 offering. The RTX 2060 system does push out 6% better average frame rates, but with the Intel processor it loses to Ryzen in 1% lows. The Ryzen 9 4900HS is able to deliver 2% better minimum performance here and a more stable frame rate, which suggests that in sections of the game that are more CPU demanding, the Ryzen 9 4900HS is able to keep up. Far Cry 5 and the Dunia engine is reasonably CPU bound at 1080p with high performance components. Not 100% CPU limited, but it does benefit from a faster CPU. Again, average frame rates 
We're 6% higher with the Intel configuration that packs a faster GPU, but Ryzen delivers better 1% low performance, 2% better as we've seen a few times now. And we'll keep seeing situations like this as we move through the rest of the games tested. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is quite demanding, and here we see the largest performance advantage for Ryzen in 1% lows. AMD's gaming APU option is 12% better here. That's quite a significant margin, although again, it loses in terms of average frame rates because we're not fully CPU limited throughout this benchmark pass. Looking at Hitman 2, and once again, similar results here. This is a very CPU demanding title, and it appears as though most of the laptop offerings deliver around the same performance until we get up to the 8 core Core i9 9880H, which is able to pull away with its RTX 2080 Max Q. I don't want to read too much into those results from a CPU perspective because the GPU differences are quite large, but in the RTX 2060 class, we are seeing quite good results for Ryzen. Shadow of the Tomb Raider performs similarly to Assassin's Creed Odyssey in that our AMD laptop is not outright faster in terms of average performance, but it does clock in nearly 10% faster in terms of 1% lows. This can be a surprisingly CPU intensive title, so it is a strong result for AMD. Then we get to Resident Evil 2 using the balanced preset at 1080p. This is one of the few games I tested where the Ryzen system was outright faster. Like several of the games we've looked at today, it appears to be more CPU than GPU limited, so despite the Zephyrus having a weaker GPU, it actually performs better in this game, thanks to the faster CPU performance available. And then in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, performance is very similar between the two systems. Either option here provides an equivalent experience, again, in a game that has a decent CPU limitation on it at times. At this point, we have a pretty good picture of how these systems perform. In GPU limited scenarios, the Intel combination pulls ahead due to its faster GPU. However, in many games, while average performance is better on the Intel side, AMD produces better 1% low performance. Sometimes this is only marginal in the 2-3% to better range. Other times, the results are over 10% in favor of AMD. There were also two games, Watch Dogs 2 and Resident Evil 2, where the title was CPU limited enough as a whole at 1080p to deliver better performance on the Ryzen 9 4900HS system despite its weaker GPU option. While these results are a realistic reflection of how these combinations perform, we're not entirely CPU limited in many of these benchmarks. On laptops running at 1080p, it's a bit of a borderline configuration between a GPU or CPU limit, depending on the game and hardware you have. And that's why I wanted to test 720p performance. Let's really CPU limit these systems and see which configuration stacks up better when we run into CPU bottlenecks. In Grand Theft Auto V, the benchmark pass is fully CPU limited at 720p, so we run into a situation where now, the Ryzen 9 4900HS configuration is 5% faster on average and 10% faster in 1% lows versus the Core i7-9750H. This is a flip on what we had previously at 1080p where the Intel configuration was faster on average. We knew previously that Watch Dogs 2 was CPU limited at 1080p, but the margins do grow marginally at 720p with the AMD configuration now 6% faster on average at this resolution. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is a huge swing in favor of AMD at 720p. When we CPU limit the game, the Ryzen 9 4900HS ends up 10-15% faster. And the margins in Far Cry 5? Very similar to Star Wars Battlefront 2, with that 10-15% performance advantage for Ryzen. One of the largest performance advantages for Ryzen that I saw when benchmarking at 720p was in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. In this title, the Ryzen 9 4900HS was over 25% faster when fully CPU limited relative to Intel's Core i7-9750H. This is approaching some of the margins we saw when benchmarking multi-core productivity workloads. Hitman 2 was slightly faster on our Intel configuration at 1080p, but this changes to be in favor of AMD at 720p. Here the Ryzen 9 4900HS is 8% faster on average with similar 1% low performance. Shadow of the Tomb Raider also flips to favoring AMD when CPU limited, with 6% higher average frame rates on the Ryzen 9 4900HS system. What about Resident Evil 2, a game we saw AMD perform better in already at 1080p? Well, at 720p, the margin only grows, delivering similar results to Odyssey at 720p, over 25% better performance when fully CPU limited like this. In Jedi Fallen Order, we see up to an 11% performance advantage for the Ryzen 9 4900HS at 720p, which is similar to many of the other titles we've been going through. What about some of the games we discussed earlier that were more GPU limited at 1080p? Well, that remains the case at 720p. Games like Metro Exodus and Control still deliver better average performance on our Intel test laptop because the GPU is pegged at high 90s usage throughout the test, 
rather than in our CPU limited test scenarios where GPU usage is typically well below 90%. I'll drop one other heavily CPU limited game in here before wrapping this video up, and that's CSGO running at 1080p with low settings. The margins here weren't huge between our Intel and AMD configurations, but the Ryzen 9 4900HS did pull 2% ahead on average in this benchmark. It's no surprise that we're CPU limited here when running at well above 200 FPS, and these results fit with many of our other CPU limited benchmarks. Alright, so that's a decent chunk of benchmarks here, looking at a range of laptops with well, the best test conditions I could manage given the limitations of testing with laptops that vary so much in hardware. There are some interesting results here to break down though, so I hope the data hasn't been totally useless for you. When looking at GPU limited titles, we didn't learn much. This has always been the case when comparing CPUs for gaming. If the title you're playing is not actually CPU limited or bottlenecked, then whatever GPU you have is much more important and becomes the limiting factor. So you're not going to get better or similar performance out of a Ryzen laptop with a weaker GPU when GPU limited, and yeah, that makes sense. However, in a lot of games we benchmarked at 1080p with ultra settings, the Ryzen 9 4900HS did produce better 1% low performance than the Core i7-9750H in our Intel system. The difference was only marginal in many cases, 2-3%, but given our Ryzen laptop was paired with a weaker GPU, this suggests the Ryzen 9 4900HS is more powerful in areas of our benchmark passes that are more CPU demanding. And this follows through to when we're seeing very CPU limited gaming scenarios. A couple of times this was the case at 1080p, games like Watch Dogs 2, Resident Evil 2 and CSGO were all quite CPU limited at 1080p, and in each of these instances the Ryzen 9 4900HS performed better. Then at 720p we saw quite a significant swing in favour of AMD. With many of the titles we looked at becoming totally CPU limited at this resolution, the Ryzen 9 4900HS delivered anywhere from 5 to upwards of 25% more performance in these games on average. When combined with the 1% low performance we saw at 1080p, this suggests that the Ryzen 9 4900HS is the faster gaming CPU when the GPU is taken out of the equation as best as we could manage it. These results they aren't overly surprising when we return back to our productivity benchmarks. The Ryzen 9 4900HS ended up 5-15% to faster in most single or lightly threaded applications, and we know most games these days are still mostly lightly threaded than heavily threaded. However, in some of the best case scenarios like Resident Evil 2's 1% low performance at 720p, which was 39% higher on Ryzen, we are more in the realm of those multi-thread results, so the difference will depend on the game, but at least in these comparisons Ryzen comes out looking quite good for gaming applications with a discrete GPU. There are plenty of caveats to this testing though. I've stressed the differences in GPU countless times in this video already, but I think the other obvious one to mention is we are comparing the Ryzen 9 4900HS to the Core i7-9750H. While these CPUs do appear to be found in similar priced laptops, Intel does have 8-core Core i9 processors in their 9th generation and an upcoming 8-core Core i7 option in their 10th generation. In particular, a part like the Core i7-10875H does produce higher single-core frequencies than the 9750H on paper, so these results might change when we can start talking about 10th generation benchmarks and performance. But what this does tell us for now is what Ryzen 4000 is capable of for mobile gaming. If we had two laptops that were otherwise identical aside from the CPU, so same discrete graphics, the Ryzen 9 4900HS should deliver either an equal or better gaming experience than the Intel Core i7-9750H depending on how GPU or CPU limited we are. The more CPU limited, the more Ryzen benefits relative to the Intel option. So if you were playing competitive shooters like CSGO or preferred to push high frame rates in AAA tiles with medium settings, it's likely the Ryzen laptop would be noticeably faster. I also think it's reasonably impressive for AMD to jump straight into this market and provide better gaming performance when CPU limited than Intel's most popular 9th generation gaming laptop CPU, especially as Intel is so focused on frequency. It doesn't look like AMD needed to compromise gaming to hit such great productivity performance. The Ryzen 9 4900HS appears to deliver strong performance in both regards. It's also impressive to see this sort of performance at 35 watts, not 45 watts like with the 9750H we tested. That extra 10 watts of thermal headroom is crucial while gaming. It could mean an extra 10 watts of power allocation available for the GPU in a given design, which in many situations, like with say a Max-Q GPU, could deliver 5-10% to 10 higher frame rates. 
All of this sets up an interesting battle between Ryzen 4000 APUs and Intel's 10th Gen H series, including that new 8 core. So stay tuned as we progressively cover those parts as systems come in. That's it for this look into Ryzen 4000 APU gaming. As I said, should be a fair bit more testing to be done as we get through all the 10th gen laptops. Hopefully more Ryzen 4000 systems come in as well and we get even more apples to apples comparisons. Just wanted to get out there and give you guys an early look at how these APUs are stacking up for gaming. We already covered productivity, so now we've covered gaming and I think we have a pretty comprehensive look at what AMD is doing with Ryzen Mobile 4000. So yeah, subscribe for the rest of our laptop coverage that we'll be going through in the next couple of months. You, as always, you can support us as well through places like Patreon, Links to that are in the description below if you want to access our exclusive Discord chat, monthly live streams, all that stuff. And I'll catch you in the next one.